My name is Mark Rubin, and I'm a dream weaver. I hope these widgets help you weave your dreams into reality. When I was 15 in 1985, I was thinking about the good thing I was going to do with my, my models and my model of energy transfer. And at that point, I had watched a TV show called Cosmos with Carl Sagan. And it was about like space and time and distance and like far things and small things and sort of, you know, the universe. And I really liked Carl Sagan and I liked the way he explained things. And I had a good sort of, I felt like philosophical sense that I'm just passing through space and time. And I was like, what, what could I do that would be helpful? Also at that time, I'd gone to a uh, wilderness school because I love nature, spending time in nature. And there was someone named Tom Brown Jr. who had a school in the Pine Barrens of New Jersey called the Tracker School. And at this school, we learned basic survival skills with like shelters and starting fires with, you know, sticks and friction and the basics of edible and medicinal plants, water purification, survival. But more than that, it was about just living in harmony with nature and living simply. Also, what I learned there is the Native American philosophy of planning for the uh, thriving of seven future generations. And this was so different than what I had learned other places in this school where people sort of don't plan very far ahead at all, maybe a couple of days. So I thought that was like fascinating because people that live connected to nature know that they're part of cycles and cycles around them, harvest cycles, temperature cycles, habitat cycles, migration cycles, all these cycles connected together. So I, what I wanted to do was combine those things. And also, I was the youngest person at this survival thing. I didn't realize this was in the mid 80s. And the way you signed up for this thing was like by, by mail, send away for like an application, and then they would send you an application. And then you would send the application back with some money, and then maybe they would accept you or not or something like that. And the first time I went, I was 14, which was uh, 1984. Then again, the year later. But on this course, the older guys who were like in their like 20s and 30s were talking about this guy named Buckminster Fuller who wrote a book called Operating Manual for Spaceship Earth. And in this book, there was a lot of ideas about resources and abundance and that there's enough energy for everyone and that we allocate uh, money for war instead of peace. And what I learned on this school from these other guys that were talking about this was the idea that if we spend 90% of the money that we spend on war, on peace, for just a couple of years, we would have enough money to um, have enough energy for everyone, enough food for everyone, enough water for everyone, enough resources for everyone, focus on education, focus on thriving instead of war. And sort of they talked about why they thought that that, that was with, with the structures we have on the planet. And it was fascinating to me. And so I looked into Buckminster Fuller when I got back in this book and also learned of his game. He had a game called World Game, which was about allocating resources in a way that, that like fed the most people, did the most good, both like, you know, food resources or energy resources, different kinds of resources and how they could be reallocated in a way that did the most benefit wasn't about like what's fair. Well, what, what, what it was about was a benefit for all living things, not just humans, all living things. And I like that idea. So I decided in 1985 that I would combine all these ideas, Carl Sagan, Tom Brown Jr. and Stalking Wolf, the person who taught him, and Buckminster Fuller into an eco project. And that would be my, my good thing that I was going to do. A side story of this is I knew no one would ever believe that story. <laughs> and I planned to do this when I was 55. That was just sort of around when I thought I'll be ready to do it. And I'm 52 now. At that time, the movie Back to the Future came out and it was it had like some time travel things. And I was thinking like, how could I preemptively create proof in the future now as a 15 year old kid? So I did. 